Pokemon podcast. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to tonight's live stream. This is episode 138 of the Protection Dog podcast. Let me adjust my camera up there just a little bit. That should be better. And um, so this is episode 138 of the Protection Dog podcast, where we offer an alternative to conventional training methods and philosophy. By the way, philosophy. Uh, that's what we talk about a lot on Protection Dog Podcast. And tonight, we're actually going to be talking about how to organize your life for success. So what does a podcast titled Protection Dog Podcast, why are we talking about things like organizing your life, setting goals, all of that sort of thing? Well, the reason we talk about that stuff here is because in my 20 years of training dogs, what I have found is the largest uh, problem for most handlers dealing with their dogs is that they think wrong. They have wrong thoughts in their minds or they have things that limit them or limit their dogs or both. And these cause constant problems between the handler and the dog. And so a lot of what we do is we try to help you think in a different way so that your interactions and your connection with your dog can be better. So it will improve lots of areas of your life, but it will also definitely improve how you interact with your dog. <clears throat> All right. So with that, let's continue on. I am your host, Joel Riles, and today is February 23rd, 2023. And uh, I want to say welcome to everybody who is with us live. Also, welcome to anyone who is watching this after the fact. Tonight, we are streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter. Oh, we lost float. We were on float for a minute and then it lost. I think uh, float's pretty much going downhill. So I'm still posting a few things there, but I'm not uh, going to be too much, too active on float too much longer. Uh, but we're also on Instagram and TikTok. And uh, so just so you guys know, the way this runs is StreamYard, which is my um, program. There we go. I went ahead and removed the float thing. Um, so StreamYard runs Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, uh, but TikTok is running on my wife's phone right there, and Instagram is running on my phone right there, both on little tripods on either side of my computer screen. And uh, so because they don't have the whatever um, integration that allows StreamYard to integrate with them, they run on their own little phones. All right, so that's what we're on tonight. Um, I just finished a cigar, so I'm not smoking anything right now, but I have my Jim Beam Black Label. Uh, it is my favorite inexpensive whiskey. However, there's a good chance this evening that Caroline's going to bring over. Caroline's on our Instagram feed, by the way. She's going to bring over the Yellowstone whiskey, and so we'll probably enjoy a little bit of that tonight. All right, before we jump into everything, let's talk about today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Fortress Canine. We build your fortress. We have personal, family, and executive protection dogs available at Fortress Canine. Basically, what separates us from all the other dog training companies out there, or at least almost all of them, is that our dogs are uh, ferocious in a fight, and they fight a human being, but they do not bite and hold. They don't latch on and stay in a single spot. They will actually release and retarget if someone is trying to hit them or stab them or anything like that. They know how to keep themselves from being trapped between the person and uh, and heavy objects so that they can uh, be controlled. They don't allow themselves to be trapped. And they're perfectly safe around your family, your other uh, small pets, your children, your friends, uh, all of that kind of stuff. So if you are interested in securing your family better, having a better setup in case you should be attacked in some format, then check out our website, FortressK9.com. That is F-O-R-T. R-E-S-S, -S, the letter K, the number nine dot com. You can also email me, Joel, J-O-E-L, at FortressK9 dot com. And you can text me. Remember, do not call me, but you can text me at 813-836-9244. Why should you not call me? Because I'm busy doing stuff all day long. And so I do not stop to take phone calls through the middle of the day. We're actually going to talk about removing distractions as part of our uh, discussion today. And that is one of the ways I remove distractions. I don't just take random calls through the day. So if you uh, need a phone call with me, you do that by texting me. And then we will text back and forth as I have availability. And if we need to set up a phone call, 
I will uh, schedule that with you and then we can connect for a phone call. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, Instagram and YouTube are at Fortress K9. Facebook is Fortress K9 Kennels. All right. Don't forget to sign up for our email list if you'd like to get inside information on sales, our products that are available, litters that are coming up, all that fun, good stuff. You can do that by visiting either of our websites, FortressK9.com or K9Academy.us. Uh, if you are listening to this as a podcast only and uh, and you're listening on one of the podcasting platforms, I highly encourage you to check out the Fountain app, fountain.fm on a web browser. Uh, you can download the app there. And then as you listen to podcasts that you're probably already listening to anyway, you get stream Satoshis. What are Satoshis? They're tiny little bits of Bitcoin. There's 100 million Satoshis in a full Bitcoin. And so you get streamed tiny little bits of Satoshis. You can build those up as you listen. Uh, you can uh, share them with people. You can give value for value. You can actually add Satoshis into your wallet if you want to. And um, it's a great way to listen to podcasts. And it's also more of a social kind of a uh, setup. You can comment on people's podcasts. Uh, you can like, you can boost, which is where you send extra sats if somebody says something that you found really helpful. So I highly encourage you to check that out. That is fountain.fm on the podcasting platforms. Uh, all of our upcoming litters that we know are happening or are uh, pregnant are all sold out right now. So if you're interested in getting a German Shepherd, Dutch Shepherd, or Belgian Malinois puppy or train dog, Make sure you contact me and we will get you on the list. We have, I know, one Malinois and probably a Dutch Shepherd. No, we had Malinois, Dutch Shepherd, and German Shepherd litter all planned for later this year. But those breedings will not be happening until at least May, which means June, July before puppies are on ground and uh, August, September before they're going home. So make sure you guys get uh, in contact with me soon if you're interested in any of those because... The selection process, once the puppies are born, is based on first come, first serve, who uh, has their reservations and their deposits in first. All right, so notes and updates, the training story. Guess what? Uh-oh, I was removed. Uh, my live access was removed on TikTok. I got in trouble again for something. Who knows what? TikTok's awful um, weird. It's real sensitive to certain things. I didn't even say anything mean about anybody. Yeah, like four trolls. Oh, do I? I wonder what they were saying. Oh, uh, they were saying, dude, is soft. You transitioning looks like a lady. Um, yeah, so we'll go through and block yeah. those people <laughs> later. All right. <clears throat> so the training story. So we were tracking today. And um, and Chip, who tracks with me, he had, he, overall, he did a, a good track, but he had probably three or four spots where he got off and uh, and then found his way back on and continued on. And then by the time I ran Punisher today, Punisher was exhausted. We had sent kind of everywhere all over the training area. And, uh, and so we basically had two tracks that weren't great today. And the great thing about having tracks that aren't great is you learn a lot about yourself and a lot about your dog when you are in situations like that. So whenever things happen and something looks like a failure, something looks like it didn't happen the way you wanted it to happen, then the great thing about that is if you will be honest with yourself, you can learn from those experiences and then you can be better next time. I have learned more about tracking with dogs from the times that I've messed up than the times that I've been successful. So being successful is great and wonderful and it builds confidence. But when you mess up on something, it makes you go, what did I do there? What was the dog communicating? What kind of things were happening? And uh, you actually get it in and evaluate if you're willing to reflect on what was going on. And, uh, and when you do that, you come out of it much better about all the stuff that you're doing. So um, I am excited about continuing to develop the dogs in the tracking and we will get through all of this and our dogs will, and us will be better for it in the long run. Uh, what's new on the dog stead? Our one Mali advanced puppy from the litter that we had uh, is going home in about a week and a half. That's exciting. We have four of the Dutch puppies uh, in their advanced training. They will be going home on, what is that? March 16th through 18th or no, no, no. It's April 13th through 15th. That's what it is. April 13th through 15th. So if you have a deposit on uh, one of the advanced puppies and we're training that up for you, 
Uh, April 13th through 15 is the window for you to come and get your one day of training with your puppy and then take them home. That's how it works, by the way, with our advanced puppies. We um, get them introduced to all their basic obedience commands. And, uh, and then you come and we spend about four hours with you during a day showing you how to work the pups the way that we've been training them. And then you can take them home and continue their training. Don't forget, we have the Canine Trainers Collaboration Workshop, April 19th through the 21st. You can get more information on that and register by visiting FortressCanine.com forward slash workshop. Uh, the cutoff for signing up for that is just less than one month away. March 22nd is the last day to sign up for that. So if you plan to attend that, make sure you get over and you sign up there. We are limiting it to 12 people maximum. And, uh, and once it's full, it's full. And once March 22nd comes around, there is no more signing up. It is locked in at wherever it is. So uh, if you are a trainer or you have a trainer that you think might be interested in attending and participating in that, then um, make sure you get over and get registered. Again, that's FortressK9.com forward slash workshop. Don't forget, I will also be speaking at the Self-Reliance Festival March 25th and 26th in Camden, Tennessee. If you are anywhere in that area and you would like to come and see some of our demos, you'd like to meet us and shake our hand, uh, you'd like to see a bunch of other awesome speakers and meet a bunch of other awesome people, you can find out more information at selfreliancefestival.com. That's all one word, all spelled out, selfreliancefestival.com. Somebody, some idiot troll, like whoever was trolling my TikTok account just now, um, marked them as unsafe, quote unquote, in Norton. Uh, they've got it all settled out. But if for any reason you run like Norton antivirus or anything like that, and that pops up, uh, just be aware there's nothing wrong with their site. Everything is good. They are not like dangerous, unsafe people or anything like that. So um, I encourage you to check that out and find out more information. And then don't forget, Nicole Sauce has Holler Roast Coffee. Uh, she also runs Living Free in Tennessee podcast, which I encourage you to check out if you have any interest in uh, like homesteading and livestock and things like that, which is pretty cool. But she has a company called Holler Roast, H-O-L-L-E-R Roast, and you can find out more information on her awesome coffee, which we are uh, customers of at hollerroast.com. Don't forget, if you want to interact and you are leaving comments that you would like me to reply to at the end, please put them in all caps. If you're on a cell phone, how do you put them in all caps? You double tap your caps button and it will put you in caps lock. And then you can just start typing. Um, some phones, if you haven't built your little, uh, you know, autocorrect kind of stuff, um, it won't autocorrect when you're in all caps as well, but uh, it's okay. If you're still on at the end and I'm replying and I'm like, uh, I don't know what you're trying to say there, you can always um, go in and reply again. All right, so with that, let's jump into today's topic. Today's topic how to organize your life for success. So whenever you talk about a topic like this, the first thing you have to do is you have to define what is success. And I define success as achieving what you want in your life. Now, one of the things that's very interesting is I listen to Jordan Peterson a lot, as you know, if you listen to me uh, on my little motivationals I do in the evening, a lot of those are from Jordan Peterson's talks. Mm hmm. I am drinking both monster and whiskey just because it's fun. So one of the things he talks about is it's fascinating how many people have no idea what they want to do. They don't know what they want. And um, and it would seem very easy, like, oh, yeah, like I know what I want. I want to do this and this and this. Right. And we give these very vague answers. And if we ever get those vague things that we put out, you know, I want more money. I want a better job. I want those sorts of vague answers, right? We go get another job and we're still not happy. We make more money and we get a raise and we're still not happy, right? Most people have no idea what they want. And uh, even though they might think they know what they want, they actually do not know what they want. Uh, a buddy of mine uh, called me up, a buddy from high school and college. We haven't talked in quite a long time. And I got a call from him the other day and uh, he's going through kind of a midlife crisis situation. And he was telling me the same thing. He's like, I don't even know what I want. And I'm like, that is very common. So if you're in that situation and you don't know what you want and you cannot write it in a succinct kind of a fashion, like I want to make exactly this much money, which isn't generally a great life goal, but 
if that's you and that's what you want to do, then you should be able to say, I want exactly this. I want to do this business. I want to have this type of property. I want to live this type of lifestyle, but write it out with detail, right? If you can't do that, I would encourage you to check out, uh, I think it's called selfauthoring.com. And uh, it's, it's a website that Jordan Peterson operates along with some other business partners. And um, they have a, there's a couple of products on that website. And one of them is called Future Authoring. And it's like a guided writing exercise to identify where do you want to be in the future and how are you going to get there? And so it's important to understand that each person's success is unique to them. Right. I consider my life right now to be very successful. I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Would I like to sell a few more dogs? Sure. That's on my goals. Right. I put my goals down. I'd like to sell a few more dogs. I'd like to get a few more people on Canine Academy, blah, blah, blah. But in terms of doing what I want to do, I do exactly what I want to do. A lot of people, probably the vast majority of people would not be happy at all doing what I do. We have to clean dog poop every day. I have to get out in the hot sun and train every day with the dogs. I have to do all sorts of stuff, but that's what I want to do with my life. And I am very happy that I actually get to do that, right? So you have to define success for you. Maybe it's making more money, but it probably isn't. And if that's as far as you go in uh, your evaluation of what would success look like for me, then you probably need to do something like Jordan Peterson's Future Authoring uh, or some other program that would help you actually go through and identify that. I actually did a podcast, I believe it was 10 weeks ago, uh, right at the end of uh, 2022 last year on how to set up um, goals for your life, how to develop and, and make your goals. And uh, the uh, links for that, both the YouTube videos that were the lives that are now up on YouTube, as well as the uh, the podcast links on all the ones that have been published on the podcast um, are there in the show notes. So you can check those out as well. And uh, maybe that will be helpful to you. And then here is the dirty little secret of successful people. And it's the thing that most people don't want to hear, but it's just what's true successful people do pretty much the same thing every day or every week, but they do it with excellence. You find what makes you successful. You find what leads you towards success and you just do that over and over and over again, which is why it's important in my mind to find something that you enjoy doing. So that while you're doing it over and over and over again, you are actually enjoying your life and you're enjoying what you are doing. But this is so important and it's so overlooked by people. If you're trying to organize your life for success, you have to figure out what, and we're going to go over more you know, daily things and weekly things and stuff like that. We're going to get into more detail on this, but you have to actually do it and you have to do it all the time and you have to do it consistently right? There are, if you've done more than 20 podcasts, which we've done 138 of them as of this podcast, right? If you've done more than 20 podcasts and your podcast has more than 20 episodes, whether they're every day, every week, every month, whatever it is, you are in the top 1% of all podcasts. Think about that. Think about the super successful people, right? One of the guys I listen to, Jack Spearco, he's on episode like 3,200 and something. He's been doing it since 2008. He does five podcasts a week. Uh, occasionally when he takes vacations and stuff, he does rewinds. And uh, so he plays old episodes, but he doesn't have new ones on those weeks. But dude's been doing it for almost 15 years. And he's got, you know, over 3,000 episodes. And if you've got 20, you're in the top 1% of podcasts. The, what's important there is most people cannot commit and most people are not consistent. And if you will not commit and you are not consistent, you will not be successful. And that doesn't mean that you don't show up at a job every day because most people's versions of success is not working for somebody else. Or if working for somebody else is fine with them, there's something else that they want to do. And you're not going to be successful at it unless you show up every day. You do the same things that lead to success every day and every week 
and you are consistent with it. You do it whether you feel like doing it or not. That's called discipline. And if you're not willing to do those things, you are not going to be successful. That is the key thing that separates successful people from unsuccessful people. The other thing that separates them is that successful people will do, will do the things no one else wants to do, right? Anytime you start to pursue something, there's risk involved in it. And it might be a lot of risk. It might be a little bit of risk, but there's always some level of risk. Successful people are willing to embrace the risk and do it anyway. So it doesn't mean that you don't get like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work out. This is kind of scary. Yeah, it's all scary. Do it anyway. Right. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about making your marriage better. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about building a relationship with your kids. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about building a business. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about, you know, achieving some bucket list item. I want to hike the Appalachian Trail or something like that. All of those things in order to be successful at them require you to show up every day. Do the things that lead to success every day and every week and be consistent about it. So what kind of things do we need to be consistent about? All right. You need to have a morning routine. Now, there are lots of versions of morning routines, and that's fine. You don't have to have my version of my morning routine. In fact, my version of my morning routine has changed over the years. When I did all my annual planning this year, and I started running my journal again, my best best self code journals that I've talked to you guys about before. And I started running that again. I tried to jump into the same exact morning routine I'd used before, but I do something new now that I didn't do before. I post all my social media first thing in the morning and I post Fortress Canine, Fortress Canine dot puppies and Canine Academy on like nine different platforms every morning. That takes a little bit of time. And so if all I'm doing is sitting there and I'm posting and then I'm waiting for it to upload. Okay, that one uploaded. Now I move to the next one. And then I wait again and do the next one. And I wait again. If all I'm doing is that, that's like an hour long process. So I had to integrate that into my morning routine where I get up, I open the first one up. I usually have drafts pre-done so that I don't have to actually go find the things and do that first thing in the morning. I just pick one of my drafts. I started uploading. I set my phone to the side and then I start working on my other morning routine things. All right. So I'm going to give you some ideas on morning routines and some guidelines, but everybody's morning routine is going to be unique to them. A great book for morning routines is, um, oh my goodness, the uh, Miracle Morning. I think it's what they call it. I think it's the Miracle Morning book. And, um, and so it goes through and it kind of gives you it's, you know, gives a lot of detail as to why each thing, but it talks about things like having gratitudes every day, doing, um, your, uh, concentration exercises, which is what the guy from, um, mind hacking calls them, but they call it meditation, right? Doing kind of meditation, reading a book every morning, doing various different things like this. And if you can do all those things in the morning, that's great. But here are the things that I think are the most important things to do every single morning. And if you want to add a few other things in there, that's great. The first one is gratitudes. I believe that every morning when you get up, I get up and I get my coffee first and then I sit down. And as soon as I have my coffee and I'm sitting down, I write down the things I'm thankful for that day. And I've mentioned this in the last couple of episodes, but one of the things I put on myself is I cannot repeat something that I've used in the last seven days. So I have to think of new things. I can't, because what will happen is you'll get into a rut. And then you won't actually think about how grateful you are for it. You'll just be like, oh, yeah, I'm grateful for my job and that I'm making good money and I've got a good house or whatever things you pick. And then you'll just repeat them over and over again. And it does it becomes meaningless. Right. The whole point of the gratitudes is it sets a mindset for the day of I've got a lot going for me. Right. No matter how bad your life is, if you live in America, especially You've got a lot going for you and you have a lot of opportunities that most people in the world do not have. And it's very useful and valuable to stop every morning and go, what amazing things do I have in my life that I am grateful for? And then write three of those down. And it can sometimes they say it can be three things or it can be one thing and then three reasons why you're grateful for it. Right. But gratitude, you should do that every morning. And if you're able every evening too. I don't I almost never do them in the evenings, but I try to do them 
every single morning. What are the things I'm grateful for? Then I go, what is today's main goal? Right now, for me, most of my week is split up between specific goals each day, right? So on an average week, Monday is a dog training day. Tuesday is a dog training day. Wednesday is an admin day. Thursday is tracking. Friday is bite work. Saturday is class. Those are, that's my weekly general breakdown, right? But I will go, what is the most important thing to get done today? Um, today's goal is tracking training. That was my goal for today. I needed to get out and get dogs trained in tracking. So if everything else kind of went to crap, if I got that done, overall the day was a success. Maybe it could have gone better, but it was a success. And then we do our three things. So we do our gratitudes, today's main goal, and then the three things that I want to accomplish today. Now, sometimes those three things are all around today's goal. And sometimes today's goal is one of those three. So it's top priority. But then there's two other things up to two other things that I want to get done. The important thing about the three things is you can have less than three things, but you cannot have more than three things because you just won't get them done. If for some reason you get your three things done and you have more time, then great. Go find something else to knock out that day. But most people try to do five things or 10 things, or they've got a to-do list with a hundred things on it. And they're like, I'm going to get all this stuff done today. And they get one or two things done. And then they feel like a failure. And when you feel like a failure, that consistency that we talked about at the beginning is very, very hard to maintain. If you feel successful, that feels good. And then the consistency and the showing up every day is much, much easier to maintain. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so three things, no more than three things, but it could be one or two things. So today for me, it was track, movement drills with the dogs and training, and then work the puppy. Those were the things that needed to be done today on my list. And um, But whatever it is for you. So you need to be thinking, what is it? that I want to accomplish. Remember, what is success for me? What is the thing I want to accomplish? And then you go, okay, got it. This is what I want to accomplish. What three things do I need to get done today that will lead me closer to accomplishing that goal? Okay. And, um, and you can write these down during your weekly training, or you can just work on them each morning as you're doing your morning routine. Okay. But you identify what three things need to be done today up to no more than three. And then what will make today great? And what will make today great for me? I always put sell a dog. Sell a dog will make today great. I don't sell a dog every day. I don't sell a dog every week. I only sell 12 to 15 dogs a year. And so there's 52 weeks in a year. That means, you know, a couple of months is typically what I do. And so when that happens, that makes today great. It's not that I'll be a failure if I don't get the what will make today great done. It's just I keep that in my forefront of my mind, right? If there's an opportunity comes along and I can talk to somebody or somebody wants to reach out, I just got a text today from somebody on YouTube who's interested in finding out more information. And so this evening when I go sit down, I'm going to respond to them and I'm going to send them information. Maybe I'll sell a dog today. We'll see, right? But write down what will make today great. Now, for a lot of people, what will make today great, don't make this always specifically about your goals per se. It's okay for what will make today great to be like, have a candlelight dinner with my wife. I'm not going to have a candlelight dinner with my wife. Sorry, baby. But some people, that might be what would make today great for them, right? Whatever it is that would make today great, write that down. And then maybe it's something that you pursue with a lot of energy. Maybe it's something that you go, Hey, maybe I'll get to that next week. Right. But writing it down kind of keeps it on the forefront of your mind. All right. The other part of the morning routine for me is working out. I work out five days a week on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I do three of the CrossFit workouts. CrossFit kind of runs on this cycle where you do three workouts, a rest day, three workouts, a rest day. I don't really like that because for me, uh, that means your rest days are different days every week, which means that your weekly 
schedule doesn't run smoothly, right? But because they're in sets of three workouts, they're designed to be done in a set, all three of them, right? So it, it works your body in a certain way with those three sets of workouts. So I do those three workouts Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I just kind of go back through the thing and I find what three do I want to do? Sometimes I have to modify them a little bit for the equipment that I have. And I do those Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in the morning, usually between eight, and nine o'clock. And then Thursday, I'm tracking. And if you've never tracked in swamps, uh, tracking in swamps is a really good workout. So that's my workout that day. The fact that I'm out tracking in the woods is my workout. Friday, I'm doing bite work, but I usually try and get up and do a run two to three miles before bite work. And then Sunday is a day off. I, I don't work out on Sunday. Or, or Saturday, Saturday is also another bite work day. So I do class day on that day, but I don't have a specific workout. So my five days are Monday through Friday. And then I do bite work on Saturday in the training class. And that's pretty much my workout on that day. And then Sunday is just a kennel cleaning day. And I take it a lot easier on that day. But here's what happens when you work out. And, and for working out for you, by the way, it does not need to be CrossFit. It does not need to be something crazy hard. It doesn't even need to take that long. It just needs to be you getting out and doing something that stresses your body a little bit and gets the blood flowing. What happens when you work out and you get moving is you get motivated when you get moving, right? So if you don't feel like working out, what you should do is have either go to bed wearing your workout outfit or have your workout outfit sitting right there on top of your shoes, your, your running shoes or workout shoes or whatever. And first thing in the morning, you get up, you put that outfit on, you get those shoes on, then you get coffee and do your morning routine. And as soon as you're done with your morning routine, you go do an activity. And by getting mobile, by starting to do something, by moving your body, you get the blood going and your brain starts to get activated. And as soon as you're done with your workout, you're like ready to do stuff, right? You're like, yeah, let's go. I'm ready. I'm, I'm all energized for the day. Okay. So that's my recommended morning routine is do your gratitudes, your main goal for the day, your three things. And remember, it can be less, but not more. And then what will make today great and go move your body, do some kind of a workout. Okay, now that your morning routine is done, the other thing I do in my morning routine that I didn't write down here is I write my schedule down for the day. And I do my schedules, and I highly recommend you do this in blocks, right? It's not like at one at, at 8.30, I'm going to do this, and at 8.45, I'm going to do that, and at 9 a.m., I'm going to do this. That is a very, very difficult type of scheduling to maintain. And unless you have like a personal assistant who's going to follow you around going, this is our next thing. This is our next thing. Okay, we're out of time, sir. We've got to move to this next thing. Unless you're going to do that, and most of us aren't, blocking your schedule works much, much better. So Thursdays is a little bit different morning routine than or morning schedule than most of my other days. But typically it's like 6 a.m. wake up and get coffee. From 6 to 7.30, once I sit down with my coffee, is my morning routine time. So that's when I do my gratitudes my main goal, my three things. I do my schedule for the day. And then if I have time, I'm also, by the way, posting my social media throughout this routine. And then I try and either um, spend 10 to 15 minutes reading a book or doing a concentration exercise, which people call it meditating in some things. I don't look at it as any sort of a spiritual thing. It's focusing for a specific period of time on a specific thing and training your mind to stay concentrated. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more down the road. And then I go work out and now I've got my schedule blocked, right? So then I have from typically from eight to nine or nine 30 is my workout. And I come in and I get dressed for the day, nine 30 to 10 and then 10 to whatever. If I'm doing admin for the day, it's probably like 10 to four or 5 PM, right? 10 AM to four or 5 PM. And I'm doing admin. And then I start making a list of things I want to work on beside that on my training days. It's, I have today from 8 to 1 p.m. was blocked out for tracking, right? It's not this fine detailed schedule. It's this block of time is for tracking. This block of time is for movement drills. This block of time is for puppies. This block of time is to prep for the live that I'm doing right now. This block of time is my live stream, right? If I'm going to take a 90-minute nap, for instance, which I do put on my schedule usually on Friday and Saturday, 
Um, if I'm going to do that, I block a two hour block for that because it takes me a few minutes to get ready. And then I take my nap. And then when I get up, I typically got to like get dressed again and stuff to keep doing the stuff I'm going to do later on that day. So a two hour block for a 90 minute nap is really good. A 30 minute block for a 20 minute nap is really good. See how the blocking type thing works out. And the way this also works is if I have a two or three hour block for admin that day, sometimes I'm doing my schedule and I'm like, Hey, I don't have anything going on in this time. This would be a great time to knock out some of my admin stuff. And I block out admin. And then I look back at the last admin day and I go, what things were on my to-do list that did not get done that day? And I transfer them over and I, I ask, you know, is there any new stuff I need to get done? And I write the stuff that needs to get done during admin time. If there's a two hour block, I don't focus on how many of my to-do list things got done. I do try to concentrate on those things during that time frame. But what I do is I go, when that two hours is up, I'm done. Whatever happened in those two hours got done. Yay, success. And then I move on with my life, right? Whatever the next thing on the schedule is, I start working on that. And it keeps you. So here's what happens if you don't do this blocking thing is you make a to-do list and your to-do list says something like one that might be for me. Build a certain number of web pages for like to highlight each dog, right? In my mind, that was going to be easy. It was going to be, yeah, I'm going to write do a little write-up for the dog. And then I'm going to do a couple pictures for the dog, like a headshot and a body shot and a few little things like that. And then I might have a video for the dog. And then I might give a little bit of like their lineage information and some of that kind of stuff. And I'll just build this like um, template and then I'll just do that for the dogs. And I'll have all the dogs knocked out in a couple weeks. And then I realize, you know, it's really hard to go through like a hundred thousand pictures and find good pictures of that dog that you want to use. It's almost better to not even go through those pictures at all. Just go get the dogs and go out and do new pictures and videos just for those dogs, which is probably what I'll actually do. Right. But if I had written down, that was the goal. I would have spent five or six days or 10 days working on that one thing, trying to get it done. And I don't have five or six or 10 days to spend on that. I had two hours that day to spend on admin. So maybe I spent that two hours going through and organizing photos. Maybe I spent that, maybe I just said, you know what, move to the next thing on the list because I'm not going to make any progress on that in two hours. Okay. But if you were really bad at estimating how long a thing is going to take, sometimes you think it's going to take an hour and it takes 10 minutes. Sometimes you think it's going to take an hour and it takes 10 days, right? So we're really bad at estimating time. And when we, get locked into finish this thing this day, you may not finish that thing that day. And if that's your version of success for, for having a successful day that day, you feel like a failure. If the day was spend two hours working on it and get whatever you get done in two hours done and then move on to the next thing and you do that and then you move to the next thing, now you feel successful. I stayed on schedule. I spent two hours on that admin thing, but then I moved on to the next thing and I got the stuff done today that I needed to get done. So you see how that motivation rides itself. It continues to kind of build and thrive upon itself as you go through. So that's why I highly recommend block scheduling out the main part of your day. And then we have the daily review. The daily review, I don't do this as often frequently as I should in the evenings. Mostly what I do for my daily review is I do that as part of my morning routine. And it's technically supposed to be part of my evening routine, but I usually don't sit back down here in the evening. But in general, I just go, how did the day go? And so I kind of on, on this notes page. So on my little journal thing here, this whole page right here is blank, right? So if I have a workout, oh, no, nope, it'd be right here. If I have a workout, I write it right here. I'm trying to do this by looking at the screen. And then if I have admin stuff, I write those things down here. And then if I do a concentration exercise, I write down what I did that here. And I, I draw a line straight down here. And then over, there we go, over here is where I write, how did the day go? And then it's usually in the morning and I write out a little paragraph about how the day went. Did I get everything accomplished that I wanted to get done? What went good? What went bad? How can I do better? And I don't really go back and review those very often. It just kind of 
if there's repetitive things that are happening that are keeping days from being as successful as they could, they will get locked into my mind and I will start making the adjustments naturally by doing that. So the daily review is good, but the most important part of the daily review, especially on admin days or if you have admin type tasks that are a lot of things going on, is you take those things that did not get done and you move them to the next admin day, whatever that is. If you could, all of your stuff could be admin depending on what you want to do, right? But you shift those things over so they don't get lost, all right? Then we do the weekly review. So for me, this works best on Sundays. I come in on Sundays, I clean kennels, I do a deep clean on our kennels. So I start around 9 a.m. and that takes until about 1 p.m. to go through because uh, everything is cleaned about three times. It gets its initial clean and then it gets like a disinfecting clean. And then I'm usually moving their dog beds around and stuff like that. And then I have to go clean those and then I put those back. And so that's a process. And then that afternoon I come in and I do my weekly planning. My weekly planning is I review last week. Did I get everything done that I was supposed to get done last week? No. Then what needs to move into this week? Then what do I want to get done this week? My weekly review is when I look at my long-term plans and I go, are the things that I'm doing moving me closer to my long-term goals? If they're not, I need to adjust. I need to make sure I'm staying focused on those long-term goals and not getting hyper-focused on these close-in things that aren't, they're important. But if, if I stay focused here, I can wander this way or that way and I get off of the schedule that I actually need to be on that leads me in the direction I need to go. All right. So your weekly review and planning will confirm that you're moving in the direction of your goals. And that's extremely important because what will happen if you don't do that is three months down the road, you'll kind of look up from your hyper focus. You'll look up and you'll go. Uh, I was supposed to be way over there, but I'm way over here, right? And you don't want that to happen. That's very discouraging and demoralizing. It also allows you to go, are these things that I thought I wanted to accomplish, these bigger goals, are they actually what I wanted to accomplish? And how is that? How realistic is that, right? And you may realize, because a lot of times when we write our goals, some people will say, way overestimate your goals, right? So in a business goal, if you say, I want to make, you know, $400,000 this year, they'll be like 10 exit, 4 million. Some people operate okay that way. But 99% of the time, what happens is you go and you do $500,000. And that's why they justify stating that. They say, if you go 4 million, then you'll go over your, four, your 400,000 that you were trying to do. You might not reach the whole 4 million, but you'll do more. Right. And there's validity to that for certain personalities, but not every personality can handle that. A lot of personalities go, oh, I didn't get my four million. I only got five hundred thousand. Well, your original goal was four hundred thousand. Yeah. But then I changed it to four million and I didn't get it. Right. And so some personalities need the success of actually hitting that goal. And a lot of times if we set goals that seem so unrealistic, and we're not a truly hardcore driven person, we just kind of go, eh, yeah, I'm not going to make that. And then we just kind of stop trying, right? So I'm a big fan of making as realistic a goal as possible. Make it scary a little bit, but realistic. So that it's going to take work. It's going to be a little bit hard, but you can actually do it or you can get really close to it, right? And then if you achieve it in six months, well, great keep going, right? Write a new set of goals and go accomplish the next thing. But if it takes you all year to get there, that's okay, right? But if you get way off course because you're not reviewing weekly and monthly, then that can get very discouraging. So just at least monthly, but preferably weekly, make sure you review your goals. Are these things leading me in the direction I need to go? Are the things that I'm writing down and doing during the week actually a moving me in the direction I want to go, right? So it's not only is, are these the things that will generally lead in that direction, but if I want to sell a dog, am I doing the things that it needs that I need to be doing to sell a dog, right? So one of my things that I have to do a better job on is taking the dogs that are available, highlighting them in videos and things like that on the social media, and then actually moving forward 
with posting those and, and writing about the dog's you know personality and kind of telling that dog's story so that somebody wants to buy that dog, right? And um, and so sometimes I'm going through and I'm like getting good content and blah blah blah, but I'm not highlighting the available dogs. So and the, the problem I run into with that is the dogs that were available that are like really showy for highlights now that are like really doing awesome they already sold right so now the dogs that are still available are young and they're still like early in the process and they don't look great they're still learning to, to do their bite work and all that kind of stuff right and so it's hard to highlight that dog because for me it's a big thing not to pretend a dog is doing something it's not doing if a dog wherever the dog is we go this is where the dog is and it's continuing to progress or make progress but it is where it is. We're not pretending, right? We don't like, um, you know, do lots of edits on our videos and all that sort of thing. So that's a challenge that I have to work through, right? But as I go through, I, I look at that in my weekly reviews and I confirm, am I moving in the direction I want to go? If not, I make little adjustments, but I'm making them every week instead of over a month, right? Or over three months. And I look back at three months and go, holy crap, I got way off course. I should be way over there. Okay, so if you're doing it weekly, it allows you to make your smaller adjustments and stay on the course that you want to get to. Okay, now here's the hard part. If you're already pursuing these things and this type of planning process will just help you go on, then the next thing I'm about to say may or may not be of super value to you, but here's where most people are. Most people are in a situation where they're like, I'm going to do whatever. And here's the hard truth. No, you're not. Because if you were going to, you would already be working on it. So if you're not working on it actively and you're just going to, no, you're not. Now, I hope that hurts. I hope it feels like you just got kicked in the stomach. Because if you're actually going to do something and you haven't done anything yet, then it should hurt. You've been sucking, suck less. So here is how you suck less. You identify something that is going to get done that is gonna start moving you in the direction. You don't even need a super long-term goal, right? Let's say that one of the important things to you for success is that you start working out. You're gonna work out tomorrow. You should probably work out tonight, but at the very least, you're going to work out tomorrow. And so tonight, you're going to set out your workout clothes. You're going to decide what workout you're going to do. You're going to get everything ready for that workout. So that in the morning, you get up and you work out. If your goal is to start some kind of a side hustle, you're going to launch in two weeks. Now, here's where most people... Here's why most people never succeed because they never start and get going. Well, I have to do all these things before I can launch and I can't get them all done because I need more money or I need this or I need that. No, you don't. Stop making excuses because that's all that is. Two weeks, you're launching. What are the absolute necessary things that have to happen in the next two weeks to launch? Do you have a website? Better go get one. Better learn real quick. Just throw up a one, two, three page website. Get it up. Get a store on it. Get one product on it. Launch. Here's the problem most people have in their perceptions. But it's going to look bad. But my video and audio quality aren't going to be great. But, but, but we have this perception that we create a website. We, we start a page on Facebook. We make a channel on YouTube and everybody sees us. Oh no, I'm not perfect. I don't want everybody to see me. Nobody sees you. Nobody knows you exist. No one will visit your website. No one will look at your YouTube channel. No one will get on your Instagram and Facebook accounts. That's okay. Because it's going to take you a couple of months of consistently posting, consistently building, consistently adding, 
consistently getting the things done that need to get done so that you will be successful, no one is going to see the crappy stuff. And the one or two people that do, who cares? And the one or two people that see it and like you anyway, become your most ardent long-term fans. Stop trying to be perfect. Two weeks. You will launch in two weeks. What has to get done in those two weeks? Get it rid of all the extra stuff. All that stuff can be done later. I can get it done later. It doesn't need to happen right now. What must happen for me to move in two weeks and be going? It's happening in two weeks. Now, you can make it a week. You can make it a month. I like two weeks because two weeks is just enough time to get some real stuff accomplished, but not enough time to get much accomplished. But you need to start giving yourself time limits. Set hard time limits. This was the biggest thing that got my business rolling. And I've been doing this full time for 12 years now. I've been training dogs for 20, but I've been running my training business full time for 12 years. What got it going? I launched a website. I just did it. I'm just like, boom, there it is. I don't know how to build a website. Guess I better figure it out. How do you pick a theme? How do you do all these things? How do you edit it? Then by the time I got around to updating my website, everything had changed in WordPress. And I'm like, holy crap, I got to figure out all this stuff all over again. Right now I've got a web guy who does it all for me or most of it. I still put new content up, but if something goes wrong, I go, hey, this is going wrong. And he fixes it for me, right? It's awesome. I should have done it years ago, but I went and did it. I went and got the Facebook pages and the Instagram pages and the website and got that stuff locked in and I started building it and I just did it. And that made it real. And once it was real, it was something worth pursuing. Start doing something now. Make it real. Stop pretending you're going to do it in the future. If you're not willing right now to say in two weeks I'm launching, it's never going to happen. So quit lying to yourself. Either you're going to do it or you're just never going to do it. And the sad fact is most of you are never going to do it. So just accept that you're a loser and you're never going to be successful. Or get pissed off that I just said you're a loser and you're never going to be successful. And go, fuck you, Joel. I'm doing it anyway. I hope that's what you do. I hope you get mad that I just said you're not going to be successful. And I want you to send me an email if that's what you thought a year from now when you're successful and say, see, I did it. You're an asshole. You said I couldn't. You said I wouldn't be successful. I proved you wrong. That'd be the best email I could get. All right. Now, here's the other problem. Once you start moving in this direction, you start doing things. Here's the other thing that gets people hung up distractions. Distractions will kill your progress. All right. I give my phone number out on this podcast. I put my phone number on my social media posts and I get calls from these random numbers all the time. And I just hit go to voicemail or whatever. Like I just put my phone, no, stop ringing. I don't want to hear that. And I move on with my life. And I tell you guys, text me, do not call me. It's not because I'm mean. It is partly because I prefer to text than actually talk on the phone. I'm an introvert and talking like this is fine. Talking with an actual person makes me tired. But it's mostly because I'm doing stuff. That block schedule, there's not a time on it that says take phone calls, right? What I do is I look and if I have admin time or if I have relaxed time in the evening, well, right before I start my relaxed time, let's set up a call. I'll talk to you. And then when we're done, I'll go do my relaxed evening time with my wife, right? I do not allow things to distract me from whatever is on that block of time. And it's really hard to do. So if you need to turn your phone on standby mode, if you need to, whatever you need to do, right? Turn it off, shut it down, leave it in another room. Distractions will kill you. 
This is why social media sucks and why I like doing it first thing in the morning when I do my post, because if you're not careful while you're waiting for your post to upload, you decide to swipe up on TikTok or, you know, scroll through on Instagram or whatever. And before you know it, 10 minutes ago, your post was up, but you've just been mindlessly wasting time. Right. And people say all the time, I don't have time. Yes, you do. Everybody has time. You probably sleep too much, at least if you're trying to build something big. You need to get back into a routine of seven to eight hours of sleep eventually. But I spent five or six years, four hours sleep a night, every night, four hours. In fact, it wasn't even four hours sleep at night because I was working night shift. It was four hours sleep from 8 a.m. to noon. That's when I slept for five or six years straight. 8 a.m. to noon, I slept. I got up at noon. I trained dogs. I went in at 8 p.m. I worked my night shift. I came home. I fed dogs. And I went to bed at 8 a.m. I slept till noon and I got up and did it again. It sucked. It was hard. And now I look back and go, but it was totally worth it. Now, I'm very, very happy that I get my seven to eight hours sleep a night now. But I only get that because I got my four hours sleep a night for years while I was building this. You have time. If you want it, you will do it. And if you say, oh, well, I can't sleep four hours a night. What you're saying is, I'd prefer to sleep than accomplish that thing. So you get what you want. Do you want to sleep or do you want to accomplish this thing? Now, I'm not saying all of these things require you to sleep. A lot of it is just scheduling your time better, right? If you work eight hours a day, let's say you have an hour commute each way. It takes you an hour to get ready in the morning. So that's eight, nine, 10, 11 hours. And you sleep eight hours because you get a good full night's sleep. That's three hours of time. Let's say you spend an hour with your family in the evening. That's still two hours left in the day. What are you doing with it? And you can block that two hours out and you can start doing something. You can start making something happen. But during that two hours, you better cut out those distractions. Because if you don't, it'll be like two minutes. And it'll be essentially like not doing it at all. So be very careful about allowing distractions in your life. And this is one of the reasons I love the concentration exercises. And I like calling them concentration exercises rather than meditation because meditation seems all woo-woo and idiot. And a lot of the ways that a lot of people do it, from my personal opinion, do seem that way. I've never done it as a spiritual thing. I give two craps about that. I'm a Christian and I don't need to do meditation to be a Christian. Okay? But... What I like about the concentration exercises, especially if you do them in the methodology explained in uh, Mind Hacking by Sir John Hargrave. I've mentioned that book a lot to you guys. Get the audio book. The audio book is in two parts. The first part is the book. And the second part is 21 days of concentration exercises. It's like the first four or five or six days are all just ideas and and games to play during the day. It's like try to uh, realize how many times today you got distracted from a from something you were thinking about, right? Because we all do this. We think about something and then we're like, squirrel! And try to become aware of that. Try to do this, try to do that. And what I try to do on this 21-day thing, although it takes me longer than 21 days because I don't do it every single day, is once I get to the 21st day, I go back and do day one again. And I just keep repeating it over and over again. But once it gets into the actual exercises, it starts with like a five-minute exercise and it's focused on the breath. Then it builds up to like a 10-minute exercise and then a 15-minute exercise. And then you start doing things like, focusing on uh, your goal, focusing on love, focusing on duty, focusing on honor, focusing on diligence. And you think about this thing and anytime you get distracted off of it, you give yourself an awareness point. Nope, I'm thinking about the wrong thing. And you come back and you focus on the thing you're supposed to focus on. And it trains your mind to concentrate on a specific topic and to stay on it. And it trains you to be aware of when you jumped off the topic, because if you're aware of it, as soon as it happens, you can go, nah, uh, little mind dog who wants to run off and play with squirrels, come back onto task. We're doing this right now. And that can be very, very helpful as you're going through this. All right, guys. So that is how to organize your life for success. Let's run through it really quick. The abridged abbreviated final version, figure out what you want in life. What is success for you? realize that most successful people are basically doing the same thing every day and every week, but they're doing it with excellence. Show up, 
be consistent. Set up your morning routine. You can modify this as you go, by the way, but I highly encourage you to have your daily gratitudes, your main goal for the day, your three things, what will make today great, make your schedule for the day, then go do something active. Okay, work out, go for a walk, whatever that is. Have your block schedule, and that way you can glance through the day. So whenever you're like, what am I supposed to be doing right now? Oh, glance at my schedule. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Got it, and go do it. Do your daily review. Shift items over that didn't get accomplished as needed. Do your weekly review and planning. Give yourself time limits. This will happen in the next two weeks. This will happen in the next month, the next six months, but have a short-term time limit, something in the next two weeks. What's going to get done in the next two weeks? Make sure you get it done in those next two weeks. And then train your mind to remove distractions and concentrate on what needs to happen. All right. So I hope that helps you. I hope somebody out there is going to send me an email and say, you're an asshole. You said I wouldn't do it. I proved you wrong. Look at what I did. I would love to get that email. All right, guys. With that, let's see if we got any comments. It looks like we don't have a lot. We didn't have a lot of interaction tonight, but that's okay. Uh, Wendy sent out the stuff there. Do we have much on Instagram, baby? Um, I saw Jason send some stuff. Is that anything I needed to reply to? No. Okay. All right, guys. Um, don't forget, there's the Canine Trainers Collaboration Workshop, April 19 through 21. You can find out more information about that at Fortress Canine forward slash workshop. You, um, uh, I like this talk. This is off topic for today, but do you ever run into programs or problems with snakes while tracking through the swamp? I appreciate that. So I was just commenting the other day about, you know, there, in Florida, we have rattlesnakes, we have water moccasins, we have coral snakes, and we have pygmy rattlesnakes. Those are like our four uh, poisonous snakes. And I've been out West where rattlesnakes are supposedly a big problem. I've, as a kid growing up in Florida, I used to play out in the woods and all that kind of stuff. Like most of the day, every day. And I've almost never run into snake problems. So I do know guys that have had dogs that have been bitten by snakes. Um, one of the things about tracking in a swamp. Uh, and so when I say a swamp back there, just so you guys get kind of get a mental image of what we're doing is there's vines everywhere. Um, there's lots and lots of briars. And if you've ever been in briar patches, you know, they're thick and dense and you either have to lift your feet up and kind of stomp down to walk through them, or you have to just push through with thick pants and, and you still get scratched up a little bit. Um, there's mucky sections that are like up to thigh deep that you kind of get in and it's like muddy muck and, and you have to be careful because you can actually get stuck in that. That's actually a real quick sand if you're not careful and, um, and things like that. So when you're moving through it, you're not quiet. It's not like, you know, moving through a, uh, an old oak forest, you know, in, in places where there's, you know, good canopy above that's keeping the undergrowth limited, um, where you can kind of move through and be stealthy and quiet and all like you're like stomping and, and moving stuff and breaking sticks and vines and uh, 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 to try and pull through some vines that grab the hold of your backpack or whatever. So I believe because that's kind of what it's like moving through those areas, um, all the wildlife's like, we're out of here, man. Like we don't want to be anywhere near these guys. And, um, and so we don't, I, I don't really have problems with it. It is something to be aware of. Uh, it's something to be cautious of. And, uh, I would caution about getting too far out from assistance, um, too quickly, like kind of figure out what your area is and be near a vehicle, be near, you know, a home, be near something, when you're starting out in this kind of stuff so that if anything does happen, you can quickly get your dog back to a place where they can get help. And um, they do have, I think what they do for dogs when they get bit by snakes is they basically get a, give them like an epi shot, an epi pen shot or a, an adrenaline shot that supposedly like processes it through their system real fast and, uh, and gets it taken care of quickly. Um, the, I've never had a dog get bitten by a snake, but I've had friends who have had dogs get bitten by snakes. And, um, yeah, it can be scary if it happens, but I personally have only ever had like two or three encounters in my entire life with snakes. And that's been water moccasins every time. And, um, and I, but I've never been bit. So that's been my experience. Um, there are certain kind of like best practices, like when you're stepping over logs, don't, if the log is here, you don't step over the log, 
you step on top of the log and then when you step out you step kind of like two or three feet out away from the log because a lot of, a lot of snake bites are snakes are under logs and people step over and it kind of startles the snake and they strike and hit you in the in the leg and um so i teach my dogs to jump over and go like out and over uh, things like that, if they have to jump over them. And when I go over them, if possible, I try and step up on them. And then I kind of like, you know, I lock my leg out that's on top and I just lean out. And when I land down, I'm usually about two feet or so uh, or more away from the log. And that really helps with that. So um, that's been my experience with snakes and dealing with snakes. And I don't know if that's actually helped me not have interactions with snakes, but that's what I've done. And I've just never really run into problems with it. Um, so I appreciate that comment and question. Uh, okay, so Self-Reliance Festival is March 25th and 26th. You can check out more information on that at selfreliancefestival.com. Hey, Robert Lawyer, Lawler, how's it going, man? Did we? I think we met at Self-Reliance Festival or Prepper Camp, didn't we? Uh, the name sounds really familiar, but it's good to see you tonight. Um, don't forget to check out Holler Roast. That's Nicole Sauce's awesome coffee. Um, it is a... I guess I think they call it artisan roast. She uses an air roaster as opposed to, I suppose, like a pot roaster of some kind. I don't know what they call the other type of roasters, but you can find out more information on that at hollerroast.com. H O L L E R R O A S T.com. Uh, don't forget, you can uh, email me at joel, J O E L, at fortressk9.com, or you can text me at 813 836 9244. I've been getting a decent number of emails and texts from people telling me, um, hey, I really appreciate this. This has been really helpful to me. That is extremely motivating, guys. I really appreciate those. Um, but you can also text me and be like, hey, I disagree with you. I think you're wrong about this. And I would love to interact with you guys as well. So if you think it sucked or if you think it was awesome, uh, feel free to reach out again, joel at fortressk9.com or text me at 813-836-9244. Don't forget to check out our websites, fortressk9.com and k9academy.us. And please, if you enjoy what we're doing here and you appreciate this content, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Truth Social, MeWe. Give us the five-star ratings, share our stuff, tell your friends about us. All of that stuff helps. Don't forget our franchise is K9 Philosophy in Texas, and it's at K9, the letter K, the number nine, Philosophy on both Instagram and TikTok, and at Mountain Vista K9. Again, remember, K9 is always the letter K, the number nine for us, and uh, they're also on TikTok and Instagram. They're in North Carolina, and uh, so I encourage you to follow both of them. Uh, tell your friends about us. Share our stuff. Check out our websites and tell your friends about that, and don't forget to use the Fountain app for value for value if you like what we were talking about tonight. Next week, we are gonna talk about fighting. Let's talk about fighting. We're gonna be going over misconceptions, the realities of a fight, and things that you can do to be better prepared should something like that happen to you. So tune in next week. Remember, we're here every Thursday, 5 p.m. Even when I travel, I have pre-recorded ones uh, that hop on. And uh, so it will still be content for you guys here. And then every Thursday morning, our new podcasts are published and available on all of the podcasting platforms. And until then, remember guys, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to train hard and stay safe. Canine Podcast.